Thanks, Marcus. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk a little bit today about kind of the future of autonomous driving, how we think about um, safety. And a lot of you think about level, when we talk about autonomous driving, we think about level four and level five, which is, you know, the truck driving down the road and doing most of the driving function itself. But what I want to talk about today is kind of that evolution, where we start, where we're at today, and kind of how we work um, both as fleet owners and operators, as well as OEMs and, and HEV platform developers. So one of the first things that we'll walk through is kind of these level one systems that we use today that you're familiar with and how we take analytics and apply that to those systems to understand how they operate, but also how effective they are. So we're gonna take a look at this first video. And here we've got a driver. He's coming up on some railroad tracks here. He's gonna glance down the railroad track and you can see the green box here where the ADAS systems track it and as he glances back in front of him, the truck actually activates the brakes and stops the, vehicle, the truck for him. And so it's one of those things by having these automated systems that are constantly looking out for your safety, that are constantly scanning the road ahead and perform a very specific function, help us to improve our overall safety and be effective. This is a good driver, but he wasn't looking far enough ahead. He wasn't looking at what his closing distance was and the system stepped in to help him. But this is where we can both look at analytics to see in what conditions is it helping me but also I can look at the analytics in the video and help the driver to improve his overall awareness of those types of situations. But as we start to look at going beyond these level one systems and we look at level two where we're starting to take things like adaptive cruise control with active steering, where we're taking over more and more of those driving functions, that's where we have to start thinking about safety. How are we gonna interact with these systems? What's the driver readiness? As we start to take up more of those driving function, how do I ensure that that's safe? How do I ensure whether or not the driver is ready to take over that driving function? If I'm entering a construction zone and I need the, the vehicle isn't sure what to do, it needs them to take ownership, how does that communication happen between the driver and the vehicle? And it's one of those things where we have to look at our systems that are in the vehicle and how they can more clearly communicate to the driver. Because one of the feedback that we hear from drivers as we start to look at these driver feedback mechanisms is just having lights or beeps or sounds, as we start to get more complicated, we need better communication to the driver from these systems that help them understand what the vehicle need, is trying to communicate and needs them to do. And as we start to look at automating these driving functions, one of the first places that we'll see this, and I spend a lot of time with some of these HAV development companies and regulators, is on I-10. I-10 is one of those places where as we look to minimize the variables where automated driving has challenges, I-10 is one of those sections of road where it has a fairly fixed traffic pattern, weather conditions are good, the road dynamics are fairly consistent, and so it's a good place for, to, for testing these types of vehicles. But that being said, it's also where there's edge cases and conditions that we need to, think, we need to consider as we do that. So as we look at that, one of the things that we see in I-10, when we have our drivers, you're gonna see the truck in front of me, and he's gonna swerve to miss something. And I can see the ADAS system down here, sees there's an object rolling towards me. But the driver knows that's a tumbleweed. The driver knows that that's not going to damage his truck. But the radar system and the ADAS system thinks that's a big four foot object that's rolling down the road and coming straight at me. And so this is where we have to take our understanding of what's happening in the real world and help translate it to these automated systems. And that's where the knowledge that that driver has, they understand what those conditions are out on the road. So how are we gonna do a lot of that? One of the ways that we'll do that is we'll start to build simulations and we take those real world driving events, what's happening out on the road, and here you can see this blue pickup truck as we come up to this intersection, turns from a no turn lane and comes right in front of us. And so that's where we can take a lot of these real world sim situations and start to adapt those and play those into these automated driving models and be able to help the system understand how it's performing. Then one of the things that we'll look at is take that base simulation, change the vehicles, change the speed, change the weather, change the time of day, change the lighting conditions, 
and make those automated functions that much better. And lastly, one of the things that we want to be able to focus on then is measuring the performance of these automated systems. So one of the things that we focus on is being able to compare starting with these level one systems. So we looked at 15,000 trucks that had active braking on them. And we looked at a baseline of 50,000 trucks and said, okay, how are they comparing? How does systems with active braking on them compare to the ones that don't have active braking that operate in similar conditions, similar locations, similar loadouts? And what we found was 16.7% that had active braking on them had 16.7% fewer collisions. Then what we looked at was the big outliers. What were the outliers in those conditions? Well, 32% more near miss collisions. So part of what was happening was we were seeing the system was activating when it saw things like a tumbleweed or it saw something that was in the road that it needed to adapt to. And so we would get, we would get better visibility into some of those near miss collisions. The other thing we started to look at is what were the types of collisions that we needed to be aware of. One of the things we recognized was we started to see we had an increase in the population that had active braking systems of rearing collisions. And so that was where understanding and adapting what the following distance was, we could start to train the drivers and also train, inform the developers in terms of what are the conditions where we need to improve the overall systems um, to make them more effective. The other thing that we looked at was um, daytime versus nighttime. One of the things that we saw was we had twice as many activations at night than we had during the day. Part, we, we had assumed almost the opposite because we had more traffic during the day. But what was happening is the visibility of the driver was shortened, but the long range radar was slowing the vehicle and was putting it in a more safe position um, during the night. The other thing we noticed, we also looked at was ge different geographic locations. How does San Francisco compare to Phoenix? And part of what we started to find was the speed was much higher in Phoenix, but I had twice as many near-miss collisions um, in the Bay Area than I did in Phoenix. And so these are all types of things as we start to look at automating these different driving functions, we can start to prioritize what are these different operating domains where the automated function is gonna be able to assist the driver. Where is it going to be able to help them make better decisions um, as they're operating that vehicle? And it's not that we're gonna to jump to level four or five right away, but what we're gonna see is we're gonna to evolve to these level two systems and have to make sure that we're applying them in just the right way so that they're there to help the driver. And with that, <laughs> I finished a little bit early. So I appreciate you guys' time today. Thanks.